welcome to the Sanford Edible Garden Trail. Today we're here with Lee Walker. Thank Hi. you for having us at your amazing garden. We're going to have a look at ideas here for water saving, ideas for what to do when you've got poor soil, and we're also going to have a look at some of your amazing garden hacks um, that you've made from recycling. So this is an amazing property. I can't wait to show you through. This is a garden made, Lee, mostly or pretty much all from wicking beds. Pretty well, yeah. There's a few, few in the ground. We tried, we tried the ground in our beds and because of the soil, I think it's got a lot of acid sulfate in it as well. Right. And it just sucked all the water and goodness out of it. And uh, it just wasn't working. But when we went to the wicking beds, um, we had to learn a lot of different things. Some things didn't want to grow. Yeah. The uh, soil was a thing, but we, it's getting better. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting better. Okay, so what we can see here in this garden, there are two different um, styles of wicking beds. So let's get going, because we've got a lot to see. Okay. We're going to wander down to this amazing structure down here. Okay, so before we get in there, which I can't wait to show you, let's just have a look at these. This is the first style of wicking bed. And in these beds, you've got fruit trees planted. Well, we have the fruit trees down there. These are outside for things that definitely need bees, like um, the cucumbers, um, okay, so rock we'll melons, and that type of thing. And you can see there's nothing in them at the moment because it's just a long time of year. Okay. Um, but the, the fruit, if you pan down there, you can see we got some we got some really good fruit this year. Uh, the orange trees are nice and sweet. I probably I... should have trimmed the uh, the flowers off a couple of the trees because we got too, too much fruit. Consequently, they didn't get quite big enough. I saw the mandarin wasn't quite right. But the... Uh, it still works it still works okay and um, so you've got we, we saw down there we've got there are orange there's mandarin there uh, are limes lime, yeah and they're all growing really well in this all style the, of wicking in the, bed in the wicking bed and they've been now that's about the third or fourth crop um this year i will probably repot a couple of them okay. and then i'll just do a prune on the, on the other ones Okay. And next year I'll do the same thing again. So this is really interesting to me, this idea of the wicking, planting the fruit trees in the wicking beds. And this has come from, uh, motivated because you said that when you planted in the ground, the soil was basically wasn't any good. Well, it wasn't, and it was growing. taking so much water and we only have a, a tank. You're on a small water tank, yeah. yeah. And it was, just, it was just sucking water in like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. We've alleviated a little bit by like say that passion fruit over there as you can see it was doing the same thing but I, I made a kind of rubbish bin in, in half and put it around it and then I could get the soil built up around it okay and it seems to held it better so it's working I've got a couple more down that way down the back we'll have a look you can at have those a look at as well so that's but, another another approach that you've had so that's not a wicking bed but that's no. just a way of like containing containing the soil it and, build, and, and building the soil up, up around it and it seems to be working okay and not using a heap of water. Okay. Yeah. Could you explain very quickly how you've made, we have this behind us here, this, how you've made this particular wicking bed and then we'll go into sure. this amazing stuff. These are, uh, these are uh, uh, 200 litre. I might be wrong on that, but I think it is 200 litre um, plastic drums. I've just cut them in half okay. and then in the bottom, I've uh, I put a uh, a plastic um, I don't know what you call it I guess just like I lifted it up on on bricks. Okay. And then on top of that, um, I put geotech, and this pipe here goes down into the bottom mm -hmm. so that the water gets to it. Okay. And then there's a there's an outlet on that side. So this is the outlet here. Now the idea is to make sure that you with your geotech that it goes down right to the bottom and up so that the sand works as a wicking otherwise when the water drops you've got an airlock and nothing happens 
Yeah. And it keeps it working pretty well that way. And I then on top of that, you put your soil. You put about that much water, about that much sand on top of it, and then about that much soil. Okay. And that's the secret yeah. recipe, yeah. according yeah. to Lee. Well, it certainly yeah. worked. Yeah. Just have a look at this, Chrissy, just before we go inside. Look at this amazing, like in a really small space, Lee, you've got a number of productive fruit trees. I'm just counting how many go one, two, three, five, five productive citrus trees mm. that you managed to keep small. Yeah. This is applicable for so many people, okay, in small areas. Let's make our way through here. And um, so people in small areas, anywhere where there's struggling with the soil and the water. Okay. One of, one let's of talk about this okay. okay when we arrived here at the garden this is the first thing i saw and i was like this is amazing this is what i need at my place but what has motivated well, you to build okay, this it motivated was that no matter what we did um things would come and eat our plants okay you know whether it be bugs um possums chickens yes cockatoos whatever yeah um the disadvantage is of course that you still have to put some things outside like your, like your cucumbers and stuff that need pollinating. That's because of the pollination. But right. basically, I find even that eggplant will be okay in there because you get a shake, it pollinates itself. Okay. Tomatoes work. Um, and it keeps out, you know, a lot of it. You still have to manage the bug problem because one of the careful, you gotta be careful you don't trap them inside and then they create their own little corn. Oh, right, yeah. So you have to be a bit careful. I imagine it works well in summer too. It gives it a bit of shade. One from of the, the shade, yeah. yeah. We are going to have to nick the top out of some of the trees. I'm going to have to get a guy to come and trim them because we're getting a little too much shade in there. Oh, right. Have... Okay. Yeah. Well, let's have a look inside. This is amazing. And you've built, this was one of the recycling hacks we wanted to talk about. So if we come inside, you can okay. let it, give, give us a little bit of a rundown on how you've actually built it. All right. Well, I had a bunch of pipe for my uh, project that I did a number of years ago. And uh, so I, it's not it's not ideal, but it works. So what I've done, I've taken um, some real real reinforcement rods. Yes. I got them cut at I think I got them cut at 1200. Okay. And then you drive them in the ground, and then you slip your pipe over the top. Um, I had to put, if you can see, um, two two together because they weren't strong enough. If you're going to buy the pipe, you'd get the two inch okay heavy duty and it would work a whole lot it would work a whole lot better okay but yeah. you've re you've recycled what you had i used what, what we had yeah yep and even the even these little scripts that run up the top here the strengtheners they're called top hats and they're left over from the building project fantastic and I've, I've used them and you can use other things as well and then what's what's on the outside what have you used here? that's a it's a it's a called a moth net okay um you can it's not a it's it's meant for the cabbage moth. Right. Is the one. Um, there's several places you can buy it. Most places, and I can give you the, uh, I can give you the, um, the name of it later, if you want. Um, Bunnings don't have it. They have small bits. Yeah. But this comes in a big. But it was specifically roll. the cabbage moth that was creating yeah. problems yeah. for you. Yeah. So yeah. makes sense. Right, so. so we'll wander down here and have a look so this is the other style of wicking bed and this is where you've got your veggies growing yeah. let's make our way down here because okay. we've got this amazing example of green leafy veggies in the middle of winter it looks amazing this what just looks so inviting healthy beautiful plants so in, in the uh in the winter time, you got to keep the water level lower, otherwise okay. it gets too moist. So what I've done, when you're when you're ready, if you can just come up here, you can see that you can see that little pipe there. Now that's that goes in. It's got an elbow on it, and I've taken this off. In the summertime, this one will go in there like that, and you'll bring the water level up. I haven't cut it yet, but I will also have some short ones to bring the level part way. So then, because it evaporates more, so you bring the water level a little bit higher. But if you dig down there now, I mean, I haven't watered that from the top for ages. 
Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll just grab the pose. So this is basically a way that you've over time worked out to make your wicking bed more yeah. efficient. You have to have to that to flexibility. To manage, yeah. manage the and, and so often, so often, a lot of times you look on the on the on Excuse the web, me? it's pretty unflexible. Okay. But if you have a look here, and you see what happens. Now there's that's gone down. See that the ground is has dropped. The water level has dropped. Okay. There. But if I wanted to bring it up. So this is how you do your normal watering? Yep. For anybody who hasn't seen a wicking bed before? Yep. So basically this pipe's going right down to where your right water down, is here? Right to there. It doesn't have any perforations, it just runs into the well. Okay. Yeah. So I'll let it go down a fair bit, it's taking a bit of filling. But you can see the water level coming, it's starting to rise. There it goes, see it coming up. Okay, so that's how you know how, mm -hmm. how much water do you have? Yep, bed? yep, and if uh, if it was summertime, it'd come up to there. So the, in summertime, when it needs more water, yeah, you bring it up a you bit bring higher. it up, and that allows you to put more water yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, Fantastic. It works on that bit. Now, one thing I must point out though, if you're putting seedlings like in, or you're putting uh, seeds, you still have to water from the top for a while until they to get established yeah till they get established okay otherwise they don't um, you know they're just not quite ready to and yeah. that that soil I've, i just put some new soil on when i when i transplant the the seedlings i'll make sure i water it for a while yeah on okay. the top. okay it's important to uh, to do that and you, you just got to pay attention like yeah, that. yeah. and yeah. then the other one is you don't want plants that have too deeper like in ground, like carrots for instance. I had some hassles with carrots, it wasn't working very well, but I'll show you something here. Okay. Um, with the carrots, I got, and I don't know them, you can find them on the, you can get the short ones. You know how some carrots are very, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, try this one. Okay. Oh, fantastic. See, that's a short one. And here it's got, it's got too full, that one. Yeah. But you can see there. Okay, so you're saying that the the shorter carrot yeah. works better in the wicking yes. bed rather than the long yes. tapered carrot. Yeah, because okay. they, they get a little bit too wet down here. So that okay. well, that's that's working pretty Fantastic. well. Fantastic, yeah. beautiful looking carrot. Yeah, okay. and nice big carrot. Yeah. so can you just do a quick um, quick run through on how you've made these? We are going okay, to do okay. a more detailed video that will come where Lee's actually going to demonstrate making one of these beds, but just okay. um, you know the You know the IBC tanks you see in the back of the utes in the dry weather around Sanford? Yes. Yeah, can you, you get them. They cost around $100. Uh, there's some places charge more, but $100 will use these. So you cut it in half, so that's $50 each. So you just cut them in half. You take this off. You can see there that that's one side you've got the sharp end down in the dirt and then basically um, you put your base in your well um, you can do it with rocks or you can do it with various different things mm -hmm. I use some some plastic uh, recycled uh, bread bread bins okay um, you put that in you put your geotech on top of that but the geotech goes down around the edges and up and then you put the sand usually about four inches of sand on top of the of the uh, of the base, yeah. And then when it drops down on the side, it'll probably be closer to eight inches. The reason to do that is, as the water drops, it still wicks up through the sand. Right. If you didn't, you'd have a gap. So this is basically you're filling it the same way that that you did with those yeah, wicking beds. Basically, yes. Okay, yep. and it's just the material that you've made them out of. So you, you yeah, did the, the principles the, the same. The principles the same. Yeah. A yep. um, couple of little little things that I've learned. The 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 little outlet one on the inside you put a an elbow that goes down so the dirt doesn't get in it okay um and then then you fill your, your you put your compost so now this people have different ideas about compost if you make compost in your in the bin like the long term it's probably too rich but i make a compost that's a mix of of leaves and horse manure and and you know, grass clippings and uh, a bit of soil so it turns into more of a more of a soil okay I'll show you here just, just, just. <laughs> let's just have a look before well, before we wander that way have a look what's going here so we've got some Asian greens 
What have we got? Some beetroot, a few different in there. Some spinach, beans, yep. beans. Beans and peas. We've got good. snow peas yep. and, I said, and some kale. I said I have a, uh, a two-legged possum that eats <laughs> all my snow peas. It's my wife. She comes up and never, you know, can never grow them fast enough. So this doesn't keep her out? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Keeps the four-legged possums out, but not the two-legged. But we also, I also have some, my daughter just lives down the road. She gets a fair bit of of greens and stuff and fantastic. my granddaughter's in town she comes out and gets some greens oh fantastic and then we have the egg so it's, it's good yeah but this is the soil that this i make this is your soil and that's oh. see that's just been made with uh, um you know the leaves and the and the and the horse manure and 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 all that sort of stuff there like that beautiful and that's what i grow it in it seems to be working working well wonderful yeah. Yeah. Well, let's this let's make our way okay, through to the way? other end. Okay, so you want to? Yep. Yeah, we'll do that. We can have a look at what have we got here? We've got some broccoli. Some broccoli here. Yeah. You've got some a lot of variety growing. Bok choy. Few growing inside. <laughs> do you just prune them so that they yeah, fit? Yeah. Now they've got this on it, but apparently it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't like it, but it's. Uh, yeah. It, um, well, it stops anything coming to eat your precious pork yeah, pork, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, what do you want to do now? Well, I think just we might just take the opportunity to look back on this, Chrissy. This is just such a beautiful sight. And then um well, this is passion. Let's part. let's just have a quick look here. Okay. And uh so we've got this example over here where Lee, you were mentioning earlier that when you planted some of the uh, some things into the ground and they just weren't well, working. I, I had a bed. I thought I'd do a wonderful idea and I put the, the bed and put the soil in it and so on. And we were pouring water to it and it just was growing out all the time. Yeah. Just, this wasn't working. So finally I put that uh, garbage bin actually. It, it should be a bit bigger in real terms, but it's a garbage bin cut a slit in the side, slipped it around, dug it down and started filling it with the proper soil. And um, it's and I also have that, that that water that can there. You can fill that. That's about I think it's I think it's ten liters, I think. And you fill that up and it's got a hole in the bottom. Yeah. And it just slowly seeps down. Since then you can see they're growing pretty nice. Yeah fantastic. So yeah. basically you've made a raised garden bed. Yeah basically. with with, with an old yeah. um an old garbage yeah, bin yeah, yeah. and yep. so by by adding all that soil in that's what's yeah. the other one is, is a allowed it to grow the one yeah is uh, is corrugated iron yeah and i just cut the strips pop over them into a big long thing and joined it and again the lemon tree has worked yeah since fantastic. i've done that we've got some we've got some pretty good we've got a lot of lemons off it this year um in fact uh jones joan has um um cut them and frozen, cut them and juiced them. So we got all these little ice cubes of, of lemon, lemon juice. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So that's that's how that works. And uh, but all, all of it all basically happens over here in the uh, in the that is so important that uh, Okay. The compost I can't thing. resist it. Let's just quickly finish our video over here. Let's okay. look at the compost. You know the compost is one of my favorite things so I think this is appropriate to, to make sure that we include this. You have to. Well, you it's don't such have, you, a beautiful you have three side. Bins. Okay. Because if you want to make a lot, you have two bins, and then you shovel that bin into that one. Okay. And that one to that as you because you you must turn it. Okay. So run us through. What's your system? Everybody's got their own okay. system for compost, well, but I tell you, your end evolved, result is amazing. Mine has evolved, but the last all that stuff was made by using the lawnmower, the grass clippings, the leaves, and horse manure. Okay. Now, when I say the lawnmower, I put it all in a big row. Okay. And mow it. Okay, so this is actually what's behind us. Yep. We haven't set this up. This was just that. Um, yeah, I didn't think the lawnmower wouldn't start. This Lee, the lawnmower wouldn't start. So you, Lee lays it out like that. So you can see it's all quite rough to start with. And then you're saying that you, you go over it with the lawnmower. Well, the lawnmower. Most of it goes in the catcher. Which, Some of it which doesn't. basically breaks it up. So it, it cuts it, it up. up really fast. And then you put about a four inch layer. And then on top of that, a little bit of uh, organic lawn fertilizer, quite high in nitrogen. Your, phone's, ri <laughs> your, your phone's ringing. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, 
and um, <laughs> then you put another layer and you put a little bit of compost soil on top of it it works like a it works like a like you're making a sourdough bread it kind of like a starter yeah it's like an in inoculant yeah going on. and if you do that it seems to work better so that much leaves and and horse manure and whatever chopped up on the lawnmower about that much um, uh, soil and then you do it again and again it'll heat up somewhere between 60 and 80 degrees after about three days then you shovel it into the next bin and then it'll do it again and then you shovel it back so you do that about three or four times and you end up with some pretty good soil yeah well yeah. thank you so thank you for showing us your amazing yeah, garden thank you for coming out yeah. <laughs> so um we already i already sneakily um asked Lee whether maybe he might be interested in opening your, your garden next year for our open day because I think this would be an amazing garden for people to see so okay. um, if you're yeah, keen yeah, if you're, we you're, would if love to have you job, happy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that I got lots of ideas from this and thanks very much for having us at yeah. your garden and keep following us on the trail where we post up videos like this of um, other amazing edible gardens. And our goal is really just sharing ideas and sharing all the, the learnings that gardeners have so that we all can be encouraged to grow a little bit more food in our own backyards. Yeah. Well, I picked up a lot from that uh, garden trail you did months ago. You know, the big one where you, where you did the eight. Oh, where we garden. did the open day. Yeah, open day. Yeah. Yep, that's what I was trying to say. Now, that was a good day. I, I picked up a little oh, ideas for that. Great. Well. Yeah. yeah, that was yeah. a very good day. That was our first open day. And we're going to do it again next year. Okay, good. And hopefully, Lee will be involved too. Okay. So, thanks. Keep following us on Facebook and YouTube, and we'll see you at our next garden. Bye. <laughs>